Access more. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Hayes Celesco's I Am Levi. And I am Jenny. And Together. we are happy to be here with you Together today. Together we are happy. We are both happy to be with you today. It's, it's, it's uh, December 7th. Oh. And that means that it is the anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Wow. What a day that yeah. changed the world. A sleepy Sunday morning, soldiers just hanging out, playing cards, running around, sleeping, and then all of a sudden, pew, oh, terrible God. attack. Uh, and that thrust America into the Second World War. Wild. So crazy. Thank a day you for telling us that. that shall live on in infamy. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we also today, as we barrel into winter, goodness gracious, December 7th. That means Christmas is uh, Upon us. 18 days away. Yeah. 18 days away. Are you ready? I'm not ready for it. I came across... Uh, something I'm going to get you for Christmas, but I most importantly, I found what I wanted for Christmas and I sent it to you. Yeah. How's that going for you? I think good. I'm very excited. I'm more excited about this Christmas present than anything I've ever told you to buy me before. Wow. I'm hoping that I got that text. Oh man. (laughs) I think it was an email. You may want to check that spam folder. Uh, Pro tip, uh, Jenny and I have discovered... It works out so much better when we just tell each other what we want. I know, but you're so good at researching things and then you find something and then you're good at sending it to me. I am always like, oh, I don't really know what I want. And then it's like a week of, and I'm like, oh, I still haven't told them. And I'm not very good at telling you what but I like want. Like the year you wanted Uggs. You just, if you think of a practical gift, you let me know. And then I, oh my gosh, I wish you want Uggs again. You want Uggs again? Yeah. All right. <laughs> noted. <laughs> I just wrote down the word noted. <laughs> It's not going to be helpful, but it is noted. I shall get you Uggs. Um, yeah, so that's, that's I our- I wear those every single that's day. That's our hack. You know, we used to surprise each other, but we ended up returning everything we got each other. I know. Not it, everything, but Jenny, most things. let's well, be when real. When we were first married, you bought me, you were so sweet. You bought me all these clothes. And I think- I would go to TJ Maxx or <laughs> Ross and just walk around helplessly like a lost puppy. <laughs> just like, I don't know, what does a girl wear? <laughs> You know, and then you were always like, oh, bless. But you bought me um, snowboarding gear in our first. Well, and I did go snowboarding for a while. You did until we got married. You were just tricking me. I did. I did go snowboarding when we were married. Mm -hmm. But then. One day you said, honey, I don't like snow. I don't know. I I just don't know still. I'm still in the deciding phase. Here's what I think you know. You know you like hot cocoa by the fire. And I like that. So I want you to do what's happy. You wear know, your Uggs. But I do love when I've seen the kids mm-hmm. snowboarding and skiing. Like that is happy for me. I and just can only handle that. like a few. We're in the thick like of that right now. All the skiing, all the snowboarding, and I'll, I'll do that for both of us. And then you, you read by the fire and we'll come in and you can save us a table for lunch. I will. I like it. Well, that's what, that's what we've been doing. I think we, we, here's the thing. And we're in this marriage season. We're talking about marriage in our in our podcast. The book's been out for a couple of weeks now, The Marriage Devotional, if you haven't got it, 52 Days to Strengthen the Soul of Your Marriage. But normally we do a preaching series around the books that we release. But instead this year we thought, let's, let's do something on the podcast because it would be fun to learn from lots of different marriages. Yes. Married couples. Mm-hmm. And so like I'm saying, hey, look, we tell each other what to buy each other. You don't snowboard. That's That works for us. Better to, to figure out who God's called you to be than to pretend you're someone else. I know. And I last year, I did fall. I had a pretty good fall. Well, and let's I be real. You feel, collided with the skier at high speeds. That's Yes. And then I fell. And Well, that's I Collided part of, and I fell. But it wasn't your fault. I will say this. Jenny uh, was not at fault. It was the uphill skier's responsibility, and she slammed right into Jenny. It did hurt a lot. And so I feel like She didn't I, even say sorry. Oh, I don't even remember. And you, I remember you said, I'm done. I'm going to the lodge. I'm done. And you said, I'm done. I mean, you took off your snowboard and walked away. <laughs> I'm done with it. So, but it's a, it's, 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 there's conflict in me because I want to be able to do it with you guys. Cause I feel like that's a fun family thing. But then part of me is like, oh, I get to see them all the time. And <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll just take a little break. You're like, I know what they look like. <laughs> I can imagine them wet. Yes. And you take really good videos. So I feel like you know, I'm the phones there. have gotten so good. It's like, you're there. It's like a hologram. We'll put a hologram of you on the chairlift. And, okay. All right. Well, like I said, this is an amazing series. Uh, and whether we're learning from 
pastor, a leader, a professional hockey player, or in our case today, a married couple who gave birth to quintuplets. Goodness gracious. And with those five kids, along with their other kid, have six kids. Six girls. Six girls. They're, you might say they're outdaughtered. Mm. As has been seen on TLC's uh, reality TV show for the last uh, eight years. Uh, wow. uh, Adam and uh, Danielle Busby are our guests today talking about life and marriage and all of that within the confines of their unique, exceptional story. Yeah, and it really is exceptional. And just hearing, we really kind of got a deep dive into their story and who they are. And um, it's really beautiful to see little bits and pieces of what God was doing um, at the beginning and how he was setting them up for what he has he had for them. And then who knows what's in the future, but it, they're really beautiful Beautiful couple. This was, without a doubt, I'm just going to say it, the biggest surprise interview I've ever done. Mm. You know, we've interviewed a lot of people and uh, a lot of exceptional people, a lot of people who, man, who've just said incredible things and we've blessed, been blessed and blown away by. I was more taken aback by the depth and by the, the quality, the sincerity, mm. um, the earnestness of, of Daniel and, uh, and Danielle humor. and Adam, <laughs> the dry humor. And their, their dynamic together is so very funny. funny. Very funny. Yeah. They've been married close to 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that right? No, 16 years. No, 16 years. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they talk about their engagement, their, their life, their their relocation, yeah. being separated somewhat. Yeah. Um, they're fabulous. I met Adam and Danielle at a funeral. I was at a funeral. A mutual friend of ours had passed away. He was seated behind me. He introduced himself to me at one point. I hadn't met him. He knew me. So I, I followed him on social media and uh, was tracking with him. I had obviously seen the show on TLC and, you know, remember the quintuplet birth. And they're, they're very... Uh, Unique because it's it's rare to have twins. One out of eighty-two births are twins. Uh, apparently, uh, the odds of quintuplets goes to like one in forty million. But even rarer still is a very rare fight club, and that is quintuplets of the same gender. Yeah, all the same gender. Sometimes it's a mixture of boys and girls, yeah. but they're all girls. Uh, what a show! I mean, it's. It's incredibly entertaining to yes. see five uh, high chairs, five pack and plays, five, you know, car seats in the car. Yeah. Uh, and they do it with grace. They do it with style. They do it in a very beautiful way. Mm-hmm. And they have such a depth uh, and a sincere love for Jesus. Yeah. Uh, that's just really, really beautiful. Yeah, it really is. So good. Um, so that is to come. But we were thinking we would talk about something. Oh, before quick, we before get to we the, get into the, it. the buzz world. Yes. Okay. What's the thing? And well, the question um, is, what would you be doing if you weren't pastoring, writing, or preaching? Podcasting? Or podcasting. Trick question. <laughs> what would you be doing, Jenny, if you were not an author, a pastor, and a podcaster? Um, I feel like I'd have to think about this. I feel like you already know what you would do. What would I do? We talked about this last week, actually. I think either product reviews uh, on YouTube mm-hmm. uh, or some sort of unique um, bespoke travel agent service, you know, putting together, you, you know, you have four days in Boston, mm. surgical, dope, high end, you know, where to eat, where to stay, what to do. Uh, something like that would totally. be fun to, for people yeah. or maybe something combined, something on like, Hey, you're going to go to, you know, Rome with kids. Like here's how and why and what to do in the ins and outs. I think that would be interesting. Um, you would do that very well. You do that actually on, I, uh, as a side job that you do. That's well, not a job, but for, you do it for it's, free. It's a side hustle I do for <laughs> Because friends. everyone knows, Oh, who do I talk to? Going to I'm New going York to and New York. York. <laughs> to get pasta in the Lower East Side, right? Yeah, exactly. But that's kind of a fun thing to do. Oh, yeah. you were going to go to Tucson. Well, here's what you're going to want to do. Here's how you're going to want to craft it. Here's where totally. to stay. Here's what to avoid. Yeah. yeah. That, so that would probably be me. Be me. Or just, com, you know, fun. I could do fun product reviews on, on YouTube, testing yes. out Garmin watches or, you know, saunas or that kind of thing. That would probably be the, the because thing. Because you do that, like, normally. Like, without even, like, you just automatic. Like, the other day... You're talking about something and you're like, you go into this mode of like, well, did you know that? 
It's disturbing the way that you raised your eyebrow as you said that. (laughs) Did you know? I'm after Captain. Like like I turned into Ask Jeeves or something. (laughs) Remember him? Yes. All right, Jenny. What would you do? I I don't know. Honestly, I would just help you. (laughs) You would help me. I would help you in whatever you did. (laughs) Where would we go and do it together? Everywhere. If That's you were if you were a travel person, I would just help you do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you were a travel person, I would just help you do that. <laughs> you gotta carry your freight. <laughs> <laughs> gotta book some tickets or something. I maybe I would do like interior design or I would be a kindergarten teacher. What if you did the interior design of a kindergarten? <laughs> Worlds oh, wow. collide. I, it would be different than what we grew up knowing. Yeah. You know, with the little wavy, the little wavy paper border that goes around the big things. Like it would just, it would be different than that. There would be a slide <laughs> to get to recess. Because surprise, the kindergarten's in a tree. <laughs> there you go. I don't really know. Um. Well. It's not going to happen because we're going to continue to preach and yes. write and lead and podcast. Yes. And, uh, and that is fun. Okay. Well, this is Adam and Danielle Busby. Uh, they have another season of their show, uh, Out Daughtered, that they are in pre-production on now. Um, but very soon, uh, Discover Plus is the place to go for that, I believe, as well as their podcast, which we do talk about towards the end of it. They're working on their own podcast, More Than Reality, I think is the title. And of course, you can see them on YouTube, uh, where It's a Buzz World continues to rage and have lots of fun. Their daughters, Blake, uh, Ava, Olivia, Hazel, Riley, and Parker. Uh, and they have a slew of dogs. It seems to be a bit of a rotating cast mm-hmm. uh, in their lives. So awesome. This is Hazel. Let's go. So we're going to learn what is it like to, to prioritize your marriage uh, with quintuplets plus one. Hey. So to the Busby world, the mad Busby world. It's a buzz world. We would like to welcome you officially to the Hey Celescos. Adam and Danielle, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, you guys have uh, the distinction of uh, having the most children who have ever, of anybody who's ever come on this podcast <laughs> all at one time. No. <laughs> we, the Grishels do have a good grip of kids. We've had some lots yes. of parents, but no one who's uh, ever produced them in a litter format. That has been... <laughs> You oh, even got a puppy on her lap right now. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Well, we're really grateful that you guys would, would take some time and come and hang out with us. Uh, what are we drinking over there? Just water. Okay, just water. Good. We're going tea here today. Dr. Pepper Zero. Dr. Pepper Zero Ooh. through a straw. That's, that's an advanced <laughs> maneuver. <laughs> that's better for the teeth, though, really. I don't know why I picked a straw. Actually, I like straws, but I think straws make wrinkles, right? Really? Where? Okay. We need to talk about this. Uh, like, like smokers? You're using muscles to like... <laughs> oh, but you would think that using muscles would like help you have like stronger area around your mouth and not cro- cause wrinkles. I don't know Are why I said that. Maybe I'm up. just... Heard no, you. it is good that we brought you on to solve this catastrophe. This is a real <laughs> dilemma. We need to figure, we need to get the bottom of this. We, we've actually brought you on today not to talk about marriage, life, children, uh, your new podcast. We've brought you on today to talk about skin care and anti-aging formulas. <laughs> we did notice the glow of, your, of both of your skin. I think that might just be the magic of Adam's lights around here. <laughs> <laughs> Movie magic. Uh, do, so do you guys have a skincare routine? Is it, uh, Adam, maybe starting with you first, is it something that's new or have you always taken such good care of yourself? Um, I just use soap. Wow. No SPF or anything? Well, I, very, I use very little sunscreen, honestly. Like, I, I tan very easily. And, let's uh, go. Let's go talk about all the things that is annoying about Adam because they're amazing. <laughs> oh, gotcha! So you're the guy who accidentally does wonderfully at everything, uh-huh. and he doesn't get a sunburn. He just gets nice golden tan. He uh, has a hard time. Uh, what is it? You're like the opposite. Like when people want to try to 
lose weight. Adam's like, I just try to. Yeah, it's gain hard. Weight. It's hard for me to gain <laughs> weight. Like, go away. <laughs> oh my gosh! Seriously. Wow. So, well, what kind of soap? Yeah, that's maybe this. Maybe the secrets in the soap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's just Old Spice body wash. <laughs> on your face? I, oh, everywhere. It's irreverent. <laughs> it's irreverent. It's irreverent. You can't use body wash on the face. You're breaking the rules. <laughs> do you really wash your face with that? I do. Dude, you're 40. Oh, you my God. Wow, so okay. Can well. we talk about something? Is your face a part of your body? Because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, technically... I yes. think that's just a marketing thing, too, when they say, like, face wash, body wash. Oh, true. I mean, there are certain face washes, like, that are, I don't think are meant for your body, but I think you can use your body wash for your face wash. I guess so. It just sounds so wrong. It's like all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Yes, exactly. And your face is your body, but your body's not your face. <laughs> that's right. I just it's feel like connected. the skin on your face is just a little more, like sensitive guys my mind has been blown today uh so and you don't use any kind of moisturizer adam uh i do not like my face is naturally like really oily and so like i'm scared to put moisturizer on it even though like i I watch like little tiktok videos of these uh like pimple popper guys the kids yes. the kids the yes, kids the girls love it. all watching this and, and then riley will be like but there's this guy up, he always talks about his skincare routine and stuff and he's like even though you have an oily face you can moisturize but well, I maybe think, also living in Houston, you just yeah, have that it, if, humidity. If now, whenever no, we go I'm up north and it's a lot drier and a lot less humid, uh, I definitely have to moisturize for no, sure. A lot of times I'm like, Adam, you need some chapstick on your lips. Adam, you need to put some lotion on your hands. Adam, you need some lotion on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got internet shamed one time because I took a picture with Mickey Mouse and my daughter and I had ashy knees and no comments were about the cuteness of my daughter or Mickey Mouse, uh, but just, you need lotion on your knees over and over again. It really gave me a complex. So I refuse to be photographed with ashy knees. It's like a, it's a security. <laughs> yeah, it's a real well, I'm the opposite. I have like extremely dry skin. So I'm always have lotion and I can't like my lips have to always have chapstick. And so when I see, I'm like, here, get some lotion here, put some chapstick <laughs> I don't have any so Adam, do you use like chapstick inappropriately? Do you put it on your knuckles? Like I'm just curious how far does your body uh <laughs> if I need it, I guess. Yeah. It's all over the place. I haven't before. Oh my word. Okay, now you guys stay in great shape. What do you guys uh you what do you guys like to do workout wise? I mean I mean you guys are both just incredibly uh, you know, cut. We're talking about Adam, who is uh you know, good at everything <laughs> so it doesn't have to do a lot to like keep it up <laughs> right you do it doesn't like, have to do a lot like I, you don't i go to i go to the gym you could like work six out days once a week a month and you just still six work. days a week that's six it days. just the six it's just six days and is it pure weights so you doing cardio you doing tabata stuff what are you doing well if i do cardio then i'll lose too much weight <laughs> so it's <laughs> Wow. What is it like being a Greek god? <laughs> I get way too fit, guys. By Adam Busby, we meant Hercules Busby. This must sound bad. No, it's if it's true, it doesn't sound bad. It's uh, awesome. It's we want to awesome. take sure your DNA cool. and drink it. We celebrate yeah. you. Yeah. Not me. I have to live with it every day. And, I mean, I celebrate you, but sometimes when you're like, <laughs> celebrate I just you. want to lose five pounds and I can't. Totally. <laughs> He's like, He's like, it's I'm going to go eat this chocolate cake, and I'm not really into sweets this week, but I love all the chocolate right now. <laughs> okay, so, so Daniel, what's your routine? What do you do? Run after kids. Mm. Honestly, my fitness has changed drastically since, like, my inflammation and, like, health stuff's changed up. I have a lot of inflammation and um, let's just call it arthritis-type stuff mm. in fibromyalgia and fluid and joints and I mean you really would think I'm 80 years old but I'm not is that just the toll on the human body of having quintuplets I believe so yeah, yeah. my like orthopedic and every, doctors it's like I can't believe you're so young and your knees look like this I'm like I know it's so sad but I mean I was in really good shape and health um and I'm not horrible health or anything right now it's just fitness is very hard right mm. now um i just i can't do what i used to do so it's mentally it's hard but then physically it's hard so it's just 
I, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's, oh, let me go back to like physical therapy is like my workouts, which it's like, that's not my norm, but that's my norm now. Yeah. Um, and then I see this wonderful muscular human being all the time. <laughs> Well, you, you might be all shucks and all you want. You guys both were in Cabo, I think, on an anniversary or something, and you posted a couple shots. You guys both look incredible, yeah. okay? Really, oh, truly. Our bald, bald calves. <laughs> no, I, I don't think you saw that. <laughs> okay, I didn't bad. see any bald caps. That was that was a different. That would take the photos in a different direction. You guys were on vacation in bathing suits, and you looked great. Um, okay. Have you tried sauna at all, Danielle, for the inflammation stuff? Uh, no, but in this vacation we just said that was the first time i've ever like went into like the sauna like at the spa there but i've never done that so one of the many benefits of sauna uh is it, it literally targets inflammation that's one of the main things if you're sitting in like a 200 degree sauna it just attacks inflammation in your whole body and reduces it and uh, it's good for the heart, good for the joints. Uh, and then if, especially if you combine it with cold baths. So if you go hot, cold, hot, cold, it is literally, uh, it, it seeks and destroys inflammation. I literally thought that when I was in there and I was like, because that's exactly what we're doing, this like hydrotherapy sauna day. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you would sweat and then it was cold and you sweat. Yeah. I was like, I bet this is good for inflammation. Yeah, you went, yeah you're you went right. Went to a dry sauna for about 15 minutes, and then you went to this cold room with you had you had like this bucket of ice chips. You literally were rubbing and, ice on, and you. you like rub ice all over you in this room for like another like 10, 15 minutes, and then it's you go freezing in there, and then you go to a steam sauna for another 15 minutes, and then come out and go to like this uh, the steam one. I didn't like the steam shower one. thing, uh -huh. like yeah. cold shower. So it was just hot, cold, hot, then cold. Then you went into like a like hot tub type thing and then you went to like the plunge pool of like the freezing cold wow yeah. how did cool. you feel afterwards amazing that i got into that cold pool that's mm. all i thought so <laughs> your your body floods you with your brain yeah. with dopamine after you get out of those things because it's just saying good job danielle you did something smart getting out of here <laughs> so literally you get this incredible um hit of happy feelings i think even oxytocin and all that which is you know normally reserved for like bonding and breastfeeding and so your brain your brain's just overwhelmed with happiness um, and then when you do that over and over again it's a good kind of like literal high and yeah. also it's uh it's so good for insomnia uh this muscle loss uh, not muscle loss uh muscle recovery and and toxins being flushed but then also uh inflammation which is so important for not only um yeah. those who struggle like you said with joint stuff but also heart stuff like mm -hmm. cardiology you know uh all all of the you know even cancer is is a factor is is, is inflammation so yeah. I'm going to have to uh, do this on the regular then. <laughs> it's our happy place. You know, mm -hmm. we have a little, little horse, right, a horse tank right now in, this, in the wintertime. It's just a metal horse tank. But in the summer, it's like more of a setup with a reverse hot tub <laughs> engine that makes keeps it at 40 degrees or whatever. But then you combine that with a little sauna. And it's so much fun with the kids, too, because mm -hmm. they're coming in and going out of it. And you can't be on your phone because it would shut off. And so it's, uh, that could be, uh, that could be a, a, a new buzz world uh, vibe in the backyard there. <laughs> There you go. Honestly. And the way oh. they challenge themselves getting in the cold water is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, they'll, the, I mean, the kids are always brave enough. Like when it does get cold here, like we'll be in the hot tub at the pool and then they'll jump in the pool. And I'm like, y'all are crazy. Yeah. 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 Kids I'm, love that jumping in cold I'm so, water. I'm such a chicken when it comes to like, super cold water. So I was going to say, did you yeah. dig it too? You didn't. So were you, were you, I feel like you really get to see who someone is when they get into cold water. <laughs> well, that was a challenge though that day. Cause like he went in and we're like, we're going to do it. And it was the last thing was the cold. I don't even remember how cold it was. 40 degrees probably. I mean, he was freezing in there and yeah. uh, he gets in first and he like goes up to his knees. He's like, Oh my God. I got it. I got into my <laughs> waist and then waist. just gave up. Oh. And I was like, it's always like, what's the challenge? You know, it's like, gotta go back. Who's going to win? Whatever. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I just, I got to go further than my waist. And so <laughs> me and my friend like grabbed hands and we just ran in there. I think we went up to like our shoulders. I mean, it was a literally a hot second. Yeah. Because it was so cold. How so long did you cold. stay immersed? I literally like maybe a second. Okay. So <laughs> if you, next time you work your way up, but like the goal would be, 
what they say is 11 minutes a week broken up into two or three sessions. So okay. if you can get, you know, three, three minutes or you know, four minutes and three threes or whatever, you, that's, that's where you get max benefit. After that, it kind of peters out. Yeah. But I definitely see like the high of like the dopamine, like, cause even that like quick second, maybe it was like two seconds in there, but like you just are like, oh, totally never felt, so never felt so alive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Adam, and Adam yeah. did you, do, do, were you, were you hyperventilating or do you enjoy it? Uh, it, it just like hurts. It like stinks <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. That it's lasts so for about a minute. Then it kind of chills yeah. out. You get used to it. Mm, not quite. No. So we, we'll do three minutes and it's so, especially in the winter here in Montana, cause it's freezing outside and you're going into this freezing water. It's like torture, but then you get out and it feels feel so, so happy. And then you're sitting good. in that sauna and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is great. Yeah. Once you feel your feet and toes again. It helps me with just the mental toughness. Like, okay, if I can do this, then whatever I have coming up this week, I can do this. Like, and I think it's so much mental because your body can handle it. It's just like, if you're yeah. going to tell yourself if you're going to do it or not, yeah. but okay. So, um, before the kids, was there sports you really enjoyed, uh, or how different, like the things that you did, you mentioned, like you had, you've had to redefine, you know, what working out is mm. now it's PT or bands or whatever. So what was it beforehand did, that you really love to do? Oh, um, I mean, well, we used to love, I mean, we still love to do fitness and work out, but we love to like just go and be adventurous and do things outdoor and whatnot. But fitness, like as far as like in the gym or something was like lifting weights and I would run and I mean, literally do everything. I did boot camp classes. I did Pilates. Mm -hmm. I did yoga. I mean, I, all of it. Wow. <laughs> it was, I loved it all. And so now it's just like from going from something that was like the stress relief and like you would see results and feel great. Now it's like, you don't feel so great. Let me try to do something to not cause more pain, but then mm. to help it. And so it's just, there's like a mental block in, in it too, because it's not what I want to be doing, but it's like things I have to do to try to, you know, better things. But it's, and then there's just, Sometimes there's a cookie that you just want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes there's a cookie. That is right. Amen. We to were just that. having a conversation about that last night. I think the quote Jenny said was, I, I just don't know that I want to work out every day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's just like saying, there's also a cookie sometimes. You want. <laughs> sometimes that cookie just says, come on over here and give me a hug. <laughs> yes. That is funny. Now, okay. Now you guys are both from Louisiana. Yep. And can we talk about how you guys met? Uh, what age were you? What happened? Because I understand it's it's uh, it's an intriguing story. The first date. The first date. <laughs> well, I want to go back first though. How they oh, met? Oh yeah. How you met? We met. We both worked at Target, and I was in the electronics department. She it's was like, in the. I think that's why we love Target. It was so back much. when Target <laughs> actually had photo labs. You know, oh you could, yeah. What year? What year are we talking here? So this was the very first Target. It wasn't even a super Target, but a Target that opened up in Lake Charles. Like 2003? So three, three, four. Okay. Wow. 2003, I think. Yeah. And you guys are out of high school? Mm -hmm. We did not go to the same school. Uh, we lived about like 20, 25 minutes away from each other. So different high schools. We didn't know each other until we met at Target, working at Target. Wow. And but. did you enjoy these prints? I've heard different things. I know I've heard some people like they really like Target and, and then some people, they like Target until they worked at Target. And then they said, I hate Target. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I don't know. You're not contractually obligated to shame I Target here. We still love Target. Yeah. The thing was, is that when the Lake Charles used to be a lot smaller than what it is until like more casinos came in and then like it just has boomed. But, um, when Target opened, everybody wanted to work at Target because it was a new place to work at. It was a new cool place, you know, Target. <laughs> um, but we worked there for probably, I don't know, seven, eight months probably together. A solid six, but I would say it's probably closer to the eight, nine months that we actually worked together that we never talked. Wow. We worked side by side and... Um, that was just... Like, literally, like, 40 feet from each other. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> yeah. 
But did you notice each other? Were you like aware, but kind of like, oh, but but just not saying anything? I was playing hard to get. He was playing hard to get, and I was like, he's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Too cool. That was kind of like, we just had like these complete opposite. I knew like, she had a boyfriend. So like, so her cousin, which was like, she was like somewhat of we, like a manager yeah. at, at, this, at this Target. Um, I went to high school with, Mm -hmm. and so like I knew and kind of knew of her, knew of Danielle, but I just, I knew she had a boyfriend. So like, I wasn't going to like go up and like try to just put the moves on. Yeah. Like I'm too much of a gentleman. (laughs) Perfect jeans, total gentleman, real package here, package (laughs) deal. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So does Target know this story that you guys Uh, met at Target? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> like they should like um, sponsor you. Maybe they do. Yeah, we've done we've done, we've a done commercials. And oh, stuff that's awesome! Yeah. yeah. So, so me asking you to to out target as being good or bad was probably not the move. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, congratulate. Congratulate. Well, I just had some friends who worked there, and they were like, "Dude, the despair of walking around and constantly just they they said it just really gave them a bleak sense of humanity. How many people just throw everything back on the ground after they take it off a hanger or whatever, and just constantly yeah. just walking one end of the store to the other, putting things back on shelves, and then repeat like painting the Brooklyn Bridge or that's painting the Golden Gate Bridge." <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like in our house. Like, I don't really like. <laughs> wow, that is Solid so point. real. So maybe it that gave you guys preparation for having six children. <laughs> Like I said, that was God preparing us. He put us through the hell of Target. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got it. I got the truth out of him eventually. The truth has prevailed. And now sometimes you're 40 feet apart and you still notice each other from across the room, but you're doing all the things. <laughs> the rigors of parenting. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. So we did, now, how did you, what about Faith's journeys? How did you two come to know Jesus? Was this something you were always raised in or was there radical stories to it? I grew up in the church. Uh, I grew up Southern Baptist. My dad was a deacon. Um, I mean, and our church growing up had a, like a preschool. So like my mom was like a preschool teacher in the church. And so every single time the doors were open, I was there. I mean, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday nights, uh, and then every now and then sometime in between. And so I was just, I grew up in the church around it. And, um, so I, uh, I came to know Christ back whenever I was just a small child and, and accepted Christ as, you know, an eight-year-old. And that's later on in life, I think it's because, like, I was so uh, protected. And my parents wouldn't. I mean, it's funny because, like, now, like, we'll talk to friends and we'll just be talking about, like, movies in the 80s and 90s. And like, nope, never seen it. <laughs> yeah, didn't watch <laughs> man satanic, couldn't, couldn't Skeletor. <laughs> Parents were not a fan, yeah. yeah. Mama uh, said. Yeah. Mama, <laughs> Mama said. said. <laughs> I don't never saw that. <laughs> That's funny. Bobby Boucher, the full deal. <laughs> My mama said. So then yeah. was there kind of like, um, did you kind of hate church then because you were there all the time? Or was it just something that you just, you did and you loved and... And how did that work? Like, did you kind of come leave and come back or what was that like? Yeah, it was, um, you know, like senior year of high school and then like the probably two years after graduation of high school, like in college, I kind of had like this rebellious streak where I just like went crazy because like, you know, you get this brief freedom and you've never been exposed to all of these things. And so you just kind of go crazy for a bit. And actually meeting Danielle was probably my saving grace. Mm. Wow. And she kind of reeled me back in. And um, like once we, once we started dating, we found a church together um, that we both enjoyed. Because we need to back up and talk about her. Okay, yes. Yeah. So let's, get, let's, yeah. get, uh, let's get your story, Danielle. So I um, grew up with a family um, who was avid members of like the Catholic faith and went to church every Sunday as a family, um, CCD, the whole shebang, uh, never really felt. What's CCD? Like catechism, like we go to these classes. So in the Catholic faith, there's, um, like I would say, like in 
at his church, it was Bible study, like you know, go to um, Sunday school or whatnot. Well, Catholics, we did like CCD, and it was more so um, once a week, and you would learn these prayers and um, all the things that mm-hmm. you're supposed to do. <laughs> so um, very traditional, lots of memorization, but I never had like an understanding of what the gospel was and you know, what Jesus did for me. Hmm. And, you know, we would, I remember, you know, as a kid, my grandma and them were like reading the Bible to us. And, and I, I never really felt that I didn't know Jesus until I probably got into middle school and would just, um, go to church with some friends and, um, just different, different faiths, whether it was Methodist or Baptist or whatnot, Um, I just would hear things repeatedly, but in a different context in that they would, you know, take a Bible and open a Bible and everything wasn't so laid out. And I just started to think like, why is, why do what we do is different? Um, And I think once I got into high school, I had gone to like a couple summer camps with some friends as a kid. um, And then high school just kept doing what the family was about and what we're doing, but I still kind of felt distant in a way. I I was doing things to make the family happy, but not doing things as something was like for my own heart Mm -hmm. and my own journey. Um, And I don't think I was understanding of that even through high school. I didn't really think like, you know, my relationship with Christ, what, that there really was an honest individual person, you know, like this, my story um, thing. And really, I think, you know, after high school, same with Adam. I mean, I was, you know, in a relationship. Um, We did go to Catholic church together, but I knew it just wasn't going to be, it just didn't feel, I just always had this feeling like my senior year and afterwards, like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Um, And uh, I met Adam and you know, months later, um, probably year later, year plus later, once we finally like built a friendship and would hang out and stuff. Who broke uh, the wall, the Cold War wall, by the way, first? <clears throat> when you guys I were did. talking, then it finally it did. Who who kind of initiated? Mister uh, playing hard to get. <laughs> so he said <laughs> his his words. I want I want you to say it just like you did that day. <laughs> And then I'll say what I said. The very first thing I ever said to her was, hey, beautiful. What? I said it. <laughs> what I do you like mean, how do I say now. it? Say it like you're 20 years old again. You're like, hey, beautiful. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> say it like very white. And it's like whispering it in there. And I was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm like, I was like. You've worked so much out to me, and you've never said a word to me, and that's what you're going to say. That is so cheesy. <laughs> was he casually setting a DVD player down on the, on the shelf? He was opening his closet, like, um, where he worked, the closet, if he needed to go get something because there wasn't any on the shelf or a customer, he would come into my area and open the door. He would do this all day, almost every day, all the time. And then this one time, he's like, I think I was doing homework because I didn't have much to do in the photo lab. Very <laughs> beautiful. And I'm like, okay, so you're that guy. Oh my gosh, that is funny. <laughs> That's what you're gonna say to me. So it's just, it's so funny to hear, like, to remember back that because it's like, it's so silly and the way that we both are, it's like, it's very fitting for him to be, uh, what's the word? What's, what's your, uh, how do you describe yourself? What's that word? <laughs> Swagger. <laughs> I'm enjoying this immensely. I want to just say, just insert right into this. so crazy. I'm trying mean? to think of that word. Uh, you're always like the cliffhanger, like the the suspense. Maybe hanging. Yeah, like, and uh, yeah. So I'm trying to think what that word is. Dang it, Gus, you're making me hot. <laughs> talking about Adam. She's just yeah. talking about Adam. <laughs> Got to put I'm the dog bummed. down. Oh my word! This is. Okay. What, uh, <laughs> I, this so like, what I am curious about? what the word is we're looking for here. I know. Suspenseful. 
Yes, yes, but I'm, I'll think of it. Okay. It might take like a year, but I'll... <laughs> You'll, you'll write us a postcard. Uh, okay, now the story does have to continue, but I also am just trying to like visualize the Target photo lab because it, it's it, now, now that you're saying that, you're right. Walmarts, Targets, they all had those photo labs. Walgreens have hung on to it. God bless them yep. or there wouldn't be any photo labs in the world. Uh, but it's yep. funny, the world with photo labs. It's and you true. were sitting there uh, just making duplicates for people, dealing with negatives, that whole life. How funny. Yep, yep. And then... When Adam asked me out on a date for the first time, he came on his day off to develop some pictures. Of my dog. Of his dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this guy really wants to talk to me because <laughs> he's on his day he off. He took a whole roll oh, of film on his dog just to get gosh. in to see me. Probably that morning. <laughs> just every single shot the same of his dog. Just a photo shoot of me and him. Just... <laughs> And that the last so photo was a picture great. of his face with a holding up a sign, will you go out with me? Yeah. <laughs> yep. hey, I can't I'm imagine, here. though, the weird things you, a photo person would see in developing people's photos all day, how disturbing that could be, potentially, and, and humorous. Yeah. And Yeah, I mean, sometimes you're like, why do people do this? Or, like, why do people pose like this? Or, like, <laughs> I never saw anything like Bad well, you say like, that just scrolling through social media, too. Yeah, though. but like, that's true. People, like, yeah, true. But yeah. what a simpler time, though, when you had to wait a week or pay, if you paid for the one hour photo, you know. You don't know what you have. Mm -hmm. a, oh, that was my favorite day when oh, one hour's like, yes, I have something to do for a solid hour. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, so then you, he asked you out finally, and you're kind of, and you're both in your faith journey kind of at a real, you know, seems like critical spot. Well, I feel like it's just like, um, yeah, so like you kind of were rebellious in a way. I am graduate high school and like moved out and I'm living on my own and um, with one of my sisters and then my cousin that he mentioned. And, you know, we're just doing the college thing. I'm paying to go to school. I'm working to pay bills. I'm just doing all the things. And, um, and church was, I think, something that I would do and would go to because our family was so traditional with like, it was the routine, mm -hmm. but like I mentioned, like the heart wasn't in, yeah. in there and yeah, there was no, driven. yeah, there was nothing there. Um, but I think after, I think you invited me to church one day after we clearly were like at a phase of like, okay, we're, we're dating or whatnot. Um, and it was that same kind of, uh, message that, the churches would reference the gospel. And, and so that just started to intrigue me. And, you know, fast forward a lot through this, um, I think we just kind of were on a journey of I'm seeking and trying to figure out, like, who is this God we're talking about? And what does that mean for me personally um, that I can have a relationship? And Adam just became like a source of someone that, you know, he grew up in the church and, like, knew so much in my eyes and knew all the questions and his dad is like just amazing advice and anybody anybody could talk to him and hmm. you know and he's always going to direct you back to God and yeah. so anytime I had a question coming from <clears throat> what I had known to trying to and I'm at this age I'm 20 21 maybe 20 no I'm 19 or something anyways upper teens whatever 20 years old um, and so I already feel like, okay, I'm an adult and I feel like I'm missing out on something. So I'm just in this, I want to know and know and seek, but I'm also like ashamed in a way. Cause I'm like, why do I not know this? Like, how do mm. I not understand this? And, um, so there was that journey through, you know, wanting to seek, but feeling like everyone knows and I don't, you know, and you're feeling kind of left out in a sense or, you know, asking all the stupid, dumb questions that there really isn't a stupid, dumb question, but you feel that. Mm -hmm. And so every time I would ask Adam a question or whatever, it was like he just had the right answers and helped me understand. And, um, you know, what that was doing for you at the time you can speak for or your, your side of, of it. But I think for me, I just really start to understand who Jesus was and what Jesus done for me. And that just... I just started to want to say, okay, like I have to separate myself from 
what I'm supposed to be doing as far as like these traditions and these things as we do as a whole, as a family, which my family I love, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling something different when I'm focusing more on like Jesus and trying to understand what Jesus did for, for me. Rather than just like trying to follow a bunch of rules. Right. And, um, check the box type things. So we just started to, um, or I would say we, but like he just really started to help, you know, kind of guide me through that. And we would, I started to go to church with him more often. And then once we got engaged, we were like, you know, what are we going to do? Cause I didn't think yeah. that we were going to go to each other's church as like, Hey, what are we going to do for ourselves as like becoming one, you know? And so we, um, yeah, I think we just wanted to, I mean, I, just the place that I was at at that time, like, you know, like I knew I was going through this real rebellious time and just hanging around just the wrong crowd. And, um, but I knew what I was doing was wrong. And, and I was just like looking for that way out. And, you know, so whenever Daniel came along, it was just like, okay, it's like almost like I have an excuse. Like I have an excuse to just like break free from that. And like those patterns that I was in, well, I also think it helped you realize that, yeah, like you said, like you did know you were wrong, but like here I am asking you all these questions and it was almost like testing your faith. Like, and it's like, you do know these things and like you can lead people to Christ with the, with, by you, you know? I love it almost that. seems like you were discovering <laughs> Jesus and your journey to do that helped him rediscover Jesus. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. What he had almost taken for granted came to life yep. in his heart, watching you kind of experience it for the first time. Wow. Yep. That's beautiful. Your words are better than you mine. You said that so beautifully. <laughs> he really did. That's powerful, though. I mean, what it a... It is. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. Okay, so you're married. Now, what year did you guys graduate high school? 2000, and she was 2001. Two. No, we were 2000 okay, We also. were 2000 also, so we're right there, that millennial figuring out why 2K was a bust, and then here we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> on into the world we, we shall come. I mean, we, we watched the world change, though, haven't we? We yeah. went from film and blockbuster and, uh, and then flip phones to now the Internet. So, I mean, the, the world has maybe changed in our lifetime more than ever in human history. Yeah. Yeah, it's been wild. Yeah. Watching stuff just come and go. Yeah, the blockbuster thing, now you're watching, like, documentaries on it. And, like, your kids are really, like, learning, like, what that kind of stuff was. And yeah. I, it was just funny that, like, just this past week, um, like, the day that the Taylor Swift CD came out, or album, and <laughs> I, I mentioned to the girls, I was like, look, the new, the new Taylor Swift CD came out, and they're like, what's a CD? What's a CD? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Totally. That's what our kids ask, too. Wait, there's a Blockbuster documentary? Yeah. Ooh. We're going to need to watch uh, that. It's a, it's all about I think the very last block because I hear there is one that's it's not a real f- company one but someone's think, keeping one alive right I think through COVID it might have ended up closing though isn't it in Alaska um, or somewhere really random like that it's a, I think it's up somewhere like in the northwest somewhere maybe it's in Montana yeah maybe Washington <laughs> yeah, exactly no <laughs> believe it or not there's yeah you, know, you want to you want to step back in time where we are is the, the the dog sleds only run every other day. <laughs> So, okay. Now, what year were you married? 2006. Okay, tell us the proposal story. Oh, that's beautiful. enough. Want to get we hit. have a lot of long stories. <laughs> want to get hit. So this is a can... long-form podcast. We can do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> we doing this or what? So we're getting we paid by the hour. We're fine. <laughs> we had been dating for a couple years, and um, 22 is like, it's always been like my number, my favorite number. Why on it, Why do we have favorite numbers and stuff? I don't know. 22 is my favorite number. And I always said, I want to get married when I'm 22. Not so much that I even know, knew. I don't even know if he really knew that prior to um, us really getting engaged. But like my birthday is on the 23rd, like two days before Christmas. Are you insinuating that I didn't know your favorite number <laughs> right up until we were getting oh, engaged? I know you knew and that he didn't work that into his nefarious schemes? <laughs> That's not the question you asked on my first date. No, like, did what's you your know favorite that, number? What's your favorite you know color? That, like, I wanted to get married when I was 22. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. By the way, that. congratulations on this whole year being all for you, Danielle. Seriously, 22. 22. <laughs> 
It's the year of double favor for Danielle. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, we uh, that year we were we were dating two two and a half years, and this Christmas comes around. So it's not like we're like a new season, like a new holiday together. It's like we've had a couple birthdays and holidays we've spent together, and so like I guess this one year it was like, what do you what do you want for Christmas or whatnot, and. I rem- specifically remember saying, I want a, I want some type of bracelet or necklace. And like, that was it. We went one time, Adam remembers his story differently, but we went one time and just to kind of look and that was it. Just nothing that I ever thought. We went, because we went looking for bracelets and stuff and we ended up spending the entire time looking at engagement rings. Ah. Gotcha. Were you at K, K Jewelers? I think it actually was. Every kiss begins with K. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember, and I don't remember looking at that a lot. I remember being like, "Oh yeah, that's cute. Oh yeah, that's cute," but not in my head. It was not. It was not like my time. Wow, <laughs> that's so. He threw funny. you off the trail, though. Probably right. Were you? I mean, I he guess did. if you're shopping for engagement so- rings, he wasn't throwing you off the trail too well, but. <laughs> But that's so Adam to be like, you think you're doing this, but you're not. Like, and so I was right on board with what he was trying to trick me. <laughs> I did the same thing. I threw her off the trail. I actually said, Yeah, I'd love to propose to you next year, sweetheart. It's just not great, like with, with finances and taxes and stuff. So maybe let's get through the next uh, you know, tax bill and then we'll do it. And I was proposing to her that next month. So she was like, Well, he said it wasn't gonna happen, so it's not gonna happen. Well, I believed him. Yeah. <laughs> Heaven forbid they take us at our word. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, he ended up, you tell it. You tell the story. Yeah, we need to hear this from your perspective now, Adam, because we've heard, we've heard it's funny, the collective memory of a husband and wife you know, on the same event I'll changes. Start telling, I'll start telling the story and then she'll just like, I'll throw in the me. correcting points. <laughs> nope. That's point. The ones that you're going to leave out that are funny. <laughs> Inaccurate, really? you know, is what it is. Mm. It, was, it really wasn't all that like crazy, like eventful though. Like, how, where where are we starting the story at? Wherever your heart desires. It was actually I was going to do it for her birthday, and we all. Her favorite restaurant is Olive Garden, so we went to Olive Garden. Remember, we're in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and. But prior to that, two there's not many before, choices in Lake Charles, Louisiana. There wasn't many choices. But Got two it. months before this all happens, my birthday, Hurricane Rita like destroyed Lake Charles. Oh. So there, we're in that phase where there, there's no, nothing is open. People don't have power. There's trees everywhere. Like it's destroyed. And Olive Garden. I do love Olive Garden salad and breadsticks. Me too. And you know, it never stops. It just keeps coming. It keeps coming. <laughs> we got all the ads going here. I know. I will so say though, true. man, though, speaking of Houston, because that's where you guys are at this moment, I love that original Carabas. We love Carabas, the one on yeah. Kirby. That's some yeah. good yeah. stuff right there. So good. <laughs> um, so no restaurants are open and it's my birthday and it's like, what are we going to do? Olive Garden was the one restaurant that opened. You can and depend so on it. <laughs> <laughs> the family together, remember? I mean, it literally was the only restaurant that was open. Uh-huh. And so I had already, obviously, I had already ordered the ring, and I was waiting for the phone call letting me know that it was going to be ready. And literally during the dinner, I got the phone call. I'm like, man. Like, it would have been so cool just to be able to do this, like, in front of the whole family and, like, for the birthday and, like, you know, you're like, I gotta no go way. real quick. I'll be right back. You run out yeah. and get it. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out a way to do it, and I just couldn't make it happen. I couldn't get away. And um, would you really have would have done it in front of a group of people? Probably not. I don't think that. you would. Have. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we ended up doing it when no one was home at my parents' house. We were waiting. It was like Christmas Eve. The next day, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve So you Eve apparently night. you got the ring. <laughs> and we were going like, you know, like making all the stops at the family. And, you know, we were at her, ha- her, her in-laws, her family's house uh, for like a bunch of Christmas stuff. And then we drove to where my parents lived and we were waiting for them to get home and we we're gonna do 
Christmas with my family that night. And so we got to the house and no one was there. And I was like, <laughs> hand goes up. Here we go. Flag on play. <laughs> we, were, we, left we, my, we left my grandparents' house to go to your grandparents' house, is what you told me. And we stopped at your parents' house. For he never told me why, and I'm like, "What are we doing here? We're, we're already late. We're supposed to be at your grandparents' house. Your whole family's over there. They're waiting on us. Blah blah blah. Why are we stopping at your at your mom and dad's house? Like, why are we stopping at the house?" And he's just like, "Just a minute, just a minute." And he doesn't say anything. And so now we get in there, and he's like, "I thought he was running in to get something." And like we get in the driveway, he's like, "Well, come on, get out." And I'm like, "No one's here. We're supposed to be at your grandparents' house right now. What are we doing?" And he doesn't say anything. So now he's getting on my nerves. Yeah. I, You're all I, frustrated. Like, bring in the house and like propose to you so while no one's here and it's just us. And He's acting weird. But I didn't he know how to inside. say it. So I just start acting weird. Yeah. He gets inside <laughs> and like he Were takes his Were you sweating sh- inappropriately, Adam? Were you super nervous? He was so nervous. You were so I nervous. I probably wasn't, thanks to the old spice. Very <laughs> <laughs> so cool. yeah, well played, sir. And your forehead, even remarkably, it stopped because you were using it on your face as well. So <laughs> that's why you look so powdery. You didn't have the clear one. You had the white. The white. Oh yes. my gosh! I was rubbing my deodorant <laughs> on my face. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. It, I had no idea what was going on. I'm sit, I'm like just waiting. I'm like, okay, he has to just get something. The next thing you know, he's like, oh, sit down. Just go ahead and like watch TV or something. And I'm like, what? Watch TV. And like, he just disappears. And I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> Went to the back, like, I don't even know. So I sat down and I, I think I turned something on TV. And literally probably like five, ten minutes later, I'm like now into this say it was friends or something like, I don't know. I'm just watching TV. And he comes in, he just, he's not saying anything to me. And he grabs the remote and turns the TV off. And I'm like, what is, what? And he's like, <laughs> this is what you do. Like, don't say It's like the, the short, you short circuited. Yeah. I literally, I'm like, what, what is your problem? Like, what is going on? Like, I, I I'm to, mad. I was trying to think of a segue and I couldn't. And he couldn't. <laughs> And, he couldn't. <laughs> and then you grab my hands and I'm just like, what? Like, are you trying to apologize for something? Like, what's going on? And that's when, like, I, like, was literally shocked. Did you get on yeah. one knee? I got on, yeah, I got on one knee and asked her to marry me. And <laughs> that, it was not very, like, eventful. I mean, she said, obviously she said yes. Did you? But right away, first words, you just said yes? I said, uh, <laughs> he said, hey, I said, he said, Hey, beautiful. I, was like, is, I yeah. probably said, is this why you're acting so weird? <laughs> hey, beautiful. Hey, hey, beautiful. Hey, she said, you oh talking, you talking, she gosh, said, you talking to me. You guys are so funny. Well, I think, actually, I think the whole time you were texting your parents because they were coming from, I don't know. I don't know. And it would have taken a while on the T9, you know, the QWERTY. Uh, yeah, phone. Exactly. <laughs> Every <laughs> button I'm hitting them. like three, three taps. Page them. You're waiting for them to call you back. And <laughs> Gosh, that's a great engagement that story, though. That is awesome. Okay, and so what year were you married? Is that 20, 2004 then? Because no. so we, six. we got married in six. Yeah, this yeah. was, we got married. So funny story. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> On, so we got engaged on Christmas Eve, December. So that was 2005. Um, and then I were literally, so we go through the holiday season, whatnot, Nick, that year starts, new year starts. And I literally went on the calendar and found the first 22 that fell on a Saturday. And it was July 22nd. And that became the day. That's awesome. Wow. Love it. it wasn't as she was thinking, but. It is funny. <laughs> to me, it's funny. But it was like January 22nd. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, so so January twenty second, that would have been crazy. Yeah. And then when did you move to when did you move to Houston? Six months later. Yeah, so at the time I was I don't I forget like timeline, it was all a blur. Um You had already at, started working for I, I was working at a local dive shop at the time. So like 
through that three years that we were like dating and stuff, I ended up getting a job and running a dive shop in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And this is scuba scuba diving. Scuba Scuba diving. Wow. How did that, where did that come from? Is that something you were always interested in? Yeah. So I had uh, one of my brother-in-laws, Nick, he worked at that, at the dive shop before me and, um, ended up getting me a job and I just it took a liking to it. And it was one of the f- most fun jobs I've ever had for sure, because just working in the dive shop and like helping like teach scuba classes and going out offshore and like, uh, rescue diving for, you know, families and stuff with offshore boats. And I mean, it was just a super fun job. Wow. wow. What's the deepest you've gone? <clears throat> Probably 200 plus feet. Oof. Dang. That's a lot of ocean above you. It is. And it's the decompression it tables. It's how long does it take <clears throat> to come up from 200 feet? Is that two minutes or three minutes coming up? It's like every 30 feet. It's like an atmosphere. Oof. So, yeah. The right. thing, the thing is, when you it depends on how long you've been down. Right, too. right, right. I mean, that, that factors into it. Gosh, yeah. have I, you ever been scuba diving? Thank goodness for dive computers, so you don't really right. Have to you think don't have much. to do much. Of that. And now Apple been. Watch could probably do all that, right? Probably so. They said it has a dive mode. Yeah. Super anxious. So cool. we've never done it, but one of my favorite books is Shadow Divers by Robert Curson, and it is about those ultra deep sea wreck guys, and a lot of them die down there, and they had to start mixing in that. What is it? Nitrogen mix in to get allows them to go even deeper. All kind of different, yeah. Con- Mixed gases. Concoction. So, were you de- dabbling in any of that at all? Uh, no, I mean not like that kind of stuff. I mean, I've I've done like um, enriched air, which it's like a higher content of oxygen. Mm. Kind of like what the Navy so. SEALs do with their rebreather stuff. Mm, I guess somewhat. It, it allows you to stay down. It's a lot. It's a lot safer. Because it's pumping in more oxygen and allowing you to kind of decompress faster. Wow. It displaces like all those bubbles a little bit quicker. Have you ever had any scares coming up? Like, because I always just think about, you know, these those movies where they come up and everyone's <laughs> gone. It's like, that's just awful. I've had a few scares, not so much just diving, but more so spearfishing. Free, and on a free breath? Free breath? I have done that, free diving, spearfishing, but also... Uh, you know, we'd go to spearfishing tournaments and stuff like that. And I mean, you're, you have different groups of people on your boat. And like, so you'll jump in three or four guys at a time. And while the other people are on surface intervals and, you know, we've been down and like, you know, there'll be a group ahead of us and they'll come up and they'll like, Hey, there's, you know, a few sharks down there that are pretty aggressive and just be, just watch out. And so you go down there and like, you know, once you shoot a fish, I mean, you're, you you want to stay down there because you're trying to get more because it's a tournament. And so you have this dead fish oh, just strapped, strapped to your waist, you know, on a line while, you know, it's eight to 10 foot bull sharks are circling you. Oh, it's, it's terrifying. Dreamy. It's dreamy is what it is. There's bleeding yeah. off your waist. It's like, come and get it, fish. Dinner is served. Yeah. And it's me. So had a few run-ins with like bull sharks and just super aggressive bull sharks that are just coming around you have to like hit them with your spear gun and push them away Gosh. and stuff like that like full-blown hit them with your spear gun just bonk yes. right in the nose mm-hmm. yeah that'll jab them inside i mean or however you can get them that'll do it danielle are you doing this too is this a thing um i mean i dive i like to dive and stuff and there's been sharks around and everything but i've never Spearfished and you know, purposely went. Oops, it's the best you call. Never punched a bull shark in the nose. Never punched a bull shark in the nose. <laughs> However, I did go cage diving with white sharks. Okay, yeah. where Ooh. was that? In South Africa, Cape Town. That's like got one of the prettiest on. cities in the world. Yeah, it the was, same boat that they do like the Discovery, like Shark Week dives and stuff. That on. was like before yeah. Quince. <laughs> wow. Now I'm like. Oh my God, I have six kids. What if something happens? <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Wow. I'm okay. my body scared of heights. And so, really do your kids get ear infections a lot? I'm just asking like for a friend named me. Do we? Do your kids. Do you guys struggle with the ear infection stuff? It seems like yeah, my kids get what? water in their ears. If we don't put the alcohol mm-hmm. drops in, they get ear infections. We just have one who's always had like ear issues who had to get tubes when she was little and like a baby and stuff, mm. but she still has, like, she had an ear infection two weeks ago and still bothers her. So, 
Thankfully, it's only one out of the six. Wow. And you get your kids are swimming a lot in water. You guys, do you put alcohol mm-hmm. drops in afterwards every time, or no? Nope. We not, we didn't no. have to used to, but I now feel like we it's do having to more become and more. A ritual. You get lake water, or ocean water, even pool water. It just seems like it just. I don't know. It happens every time. Did that not happen to you with with scuba diving? Did you have to do that, or because you're always having to decompress your ears, right? I've never really had an issue with it, and honestly, like up until, and it was. It was this year. It was like the first time that I ever had an issue with like oh, yeah. my ear. Hmm. Um, I jumped it's in. Probably because you're 40. Yeah, I jumped <laughs> in the pool with the girls in the backyard, and I just went straight to down to the bottom of the deep end, and and I it it felt like I ruptured my eardrum. I mean, for like two weeks after that, like it was just excruciating, oh. um, and I just I could not clear. I couldn't clear my ears, and like it it hurt, but. I had some sort of ear infection and come to find out and like it just I could not equalize. But How cool. that was the only that's the only time I've ever had an issue with it, honestly. Okay, so was it the dive job that brought you to Houston? Uh yes. So um not the dive job. No, it was uh the dive shop became like very successful. Uh it was like one of I think at the time it became like I think we had gotten this award or something like that, but for becoming like the number seven scuba pro dealer in all of North America, wow. which is crazy. Like Charles, you know, little like Charles, Louisiana. That's awesome. You know, competing with like all of these other dive shops, like in Florida the Bahamas and whatnot. and yeah, geez. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, ended up getting a sales job, uh, working in oil and gas here in Houston. And that's what brought me to Houston. Just, just experience like selling scuba gear and then like, Hey, you want to try oil and gas and, and petrochemical sales? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So like six months later, after we got married, we ended up moving to Houston Wow. and, uh, working again with my brother-in-law and we were a pretty good team, uh, early on. And I think like f- three or four months after moving here to Houston, we landed a contract with Exxon Mobil in Beaumont, Texas. And then I was working like these long turnaround projects and stuff where I was having to stay over there for like three months at a time in hotels and stuff. And so we had just gotten married, moved her to Houston. Nobody's around, no family. Oh, no. Yeah, she knows. Oh, yeah. See you soon. Have fun. And then here I am yeah. working 45 minutes from home, which I could have just commuted that. But so you've got Lake Charles where we came from and like Houston where we are here and Beaumont is right here. Yeah. <laughs> So it's an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes from where we are. But from like Charles, it was literally like a 40 minute drive. Oh my so, so you could have commuted had you just stayed where you were. So every, every day, like or she's caught, like stayed. I'm stressed out, like working this project. And then she, and I get back, you know, to the hotel, t- talking to her in the evenings and she's just crying. She doesn't know a soul. I'm like, yeah. why did you move here? And That's so It was hard. just me. No. <laughs> How did you and guys then, stay connected? How did you keep the marriage strong like what were some of the tips to enduring that season because i mean i know people traveling nurses and people deployed overseas lots Mm. of people listening may not have the exact story but they need to try and keep their marriage connected while in different places what was work work for you guys yeah i mean we were we were young and married moved away and so with that distance of separation, I mean, it was hard, hard because one, he couldn't necessarily communicate all the time, all day if he needed to. It was like mostly I could talk to him like after work because he'd work these turnarounds, these long projects. And I mean, here I am trying to figure out where do, where do I go to get groceries and like just everything. Yeah. And we didn't even have enough time to like have like find a church and like any, any type of community here at all. And so I literally, um, would just drive back and forth and she to would come and Louisiana and I would just stop in Beaumont. Yeah. And at this time he was living in a hotel that was like, um, like what would they call those? I'm really like an bad. extended stay. Like extended kind stay. Of like a and so he had like a, a yeah, like a little so. apartment in this yeah. hotel. And so I would go and I would, you know, take the dogs. They would allow dogs, um, right? Yeah, the dogs always come. And so I would take the dogs and I would stay one night. And I mean, whether he'd get up and leave at 5 a.m. to go to work, at least it was like 
we could maybe, when he would get yeah. off of work at 7, 8 p.m., we could have a late dinner and hang out or just see each other. Yeah. And then I'd go to Lake Charles for a week. And then on the way back, I'd come because I'm like, okay, there's things I need to take care of at the apartment um, that we moved to. <laughs> Gosh. How long was so this lived- season? How, how long was that whole period? Six, seven months, I think. Yeah. For that, for that project. And then once that season passed and like he literally moved into the apartment that we moved into <laughs> it was a whole new phase because now we're lit like really living together yeah. and it's just you and now there's not enough room for you in this apartment with me and the dogs <laughs> <laughs> it's only been really just the us. adjustment and, uh, wow the just so then it was kind of like okay what are we going to do and I started to like figure out like okay like what am I going to do I can't just like I need to find something to fill my time. And so I went found just like a little part-time job or whatnot. But then we started like looking for a church and that church, um, you know, little did we know that church would become the church that, you know, became our family Mm. for 15 years. And so um, I think through that, like we found, we, we got involved in a church and just instantly we're like, how do we meet people? Like, we don't know anybody. Um, we found a church. It was getting involved in a small group and just try to build a connecting point with people and try to serve. And so literally that's what we did. Our first small group wasn't really that successful for us. We didn't really click and bond with um, the people in there. And so we tried it for about six weeks and um, waited for the next opportunity to join a group. But in, after that, we started serving um, with youth ministry mm. and a whole journey of, you know, um, God walking us through that um, part of our life and um, trying to have a kid and then infertility mm-hmm. and uh, being youth leaders. And it's just, I mean, it could just go on and on. That's but beautiful. All, all of our, we look back and see where God laid his hand in every point of where he connected us. Um, and things that, like I was a fairly new Christian. And um, at that point, I wasn't, I wasn't even um, baptized as a faith, a believer. And so I was still new into this, like, you know, understanding Jesus and the gospel and accepting Christ and still just growing and trying to learn. Um, and we became youth leaders and, you know, as scary as it was, it was such a beautiful time for us um, in the season that we were going to be approaching that we didn't know. And um, where we, I think God kind of like, drew us in through like a little bit of photography and stuff turned into like something beautiful. Like we had a niche and like, Oh, I'll take pictures for those events turn into like being youth leaders to people in our life who we didn't know to then kind of like pray for us and walk with us, um, to meeting our best friends who went to that church. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy to look back and see what you don't see currently, Hmm. but you can look and say, God was there. He put us there. He guided us through this. He brought those people in our life because of that reason. And here, you know, connecting all those dots. So, Wow. And just seeing the persistence, though, for you guys, because I think that could be a quick, like, turn off to not to be in a small group and not really connect with anyone and be like, okay, is this even the place for us? But the, then just kind of take a next step and a next step and just to yeah. let God open the doors before you. Because truly, I mean, if you're in a church that is like teaching the Bible and Jesus centered, like there's a place for you. And I think we don't always click with people, um, right away. That's a, that's a hard thing getting into relationships with people, but that's just such an encouraging story of continuing to show up, even if things weren't necessarily going the way that maybe you expected. And then seeing God open doors before you, it's, that's powerful. I think so encouraging for people listening who might they, they tried a small group. It wasn't for yeah. them. And then they left. But you said, hey, we, we started it. We got on another one. You know? right. And then we got so on a we team. Started to serve. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's so I cool. wish everyone in, in church could hear that and just be like encouraged by that yeah. thought right there. Yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, I mean, that's what really got us through like the whole like infertility journey. Mm. Uh, just because like we were so, I mean, we went through this infertility process for years. And How many years finally, was it from marriage to Blake's birth? Uh, five. 
Uh, I think <laughs> five, five years. years. Yeah, five, five years. I'm counting on my fingers. And yeah. When yeah. did you discover that you had struggles with infertility? Was it right away, or did you had you planned to wait a while before? We we tried um, uh, for probably like nine months to a year, and then my um, OB doctor happened to just specialize in infertility, who was the doctor I just started seeing um, because I was a woman and I needed a doctor when we moved here. Mm. So I just transferred over here. And he just happened to be a specialist, um, infertility specialist. And so he kind of just guided our points and gave us things to kind of work on and try within these nine months and then said, you know, let's, you know, it's not always easy, so let's just try this. And so we tried and tried and then you started little things Um, let's, okay, let's try this and let's get this tested. And so from first trying, you know, wanting to start a family to having Blake was about two and a half years until we were successful, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so, uh, like through that process, like it, I mean, obviously it just took a toll on both of us and, um, you know, we, we're just so stressed out through the process and like, because you know, blaming know ourselves, anybody. blaming each yeah. other, mm-hmm. like, you know, like just didn't know how to deal with it all. And, you know, finally we just kind of came to the realization, like, let's just do what we feel like God wants us to do. And like, let's let him just use us and work through us. And so we just said, look, we're not going to worry about like all this infertility stuff and we're just going to serve. Mm-hmm. And we jumped into senior high ministry High school and, youth, uh, which, is, which yeah. is interesting too, because we um, we both have been told our whole life, and both know about each other and ourselves that we've always had a gift with like just children and like um, kids, yeah. and it's just been a natural connecting thing with children, and it's something I fell in love with Adam with because I saw that he had that too, mm. and it's not often you see men have that gift and so that was definitely one of the things I fell in love with Adam about um but whenever this comes full circle to like Adam's great at everything (laughs) (laughs) he's the he's the total package ladies uh but that is really cool I mean Jen and I both met in youth ministry that's how we physically met in the youth group room Mm -hmm. and then served through and I'm convinced that for us the formative um, foundation for how we parent came from how we led that youth group yeah. and now yeah. in God's providence you literally have a all female youth group in your own home <laughs> but that literally uh, that probably was a big part of that yeah. it was wow. I mean it's so it, it has it opened my eyes never knowing that I would have the life today but as I look back and say there's so much I learned and was so scared to step into that journey because I didn't feel strong enough. I didn't feel I knew enough. I didn't feel bold enough, but I just kept saying yes. And mm-hmm. we, we did this together. We were involved together. We, we would go on Wednesday nights to youth group. We would go to church and then we would serve. And so we were doing this together, but yet he was growing tremendously. I was growing tremendously. It kept us away from our own, you know, distractions and like what was hard for us and what the pain and struggles we were going through. But here we are listening to these kids who are 13, 14 year old and you're, and you're thinking I'm suffering. And you just hear from a child, their pains and their hearts. And, you know, within a month, we, we, Within a month of just letting go of our worries and just saying, "Okay, God, it's in Your hands," just we just we just want to just use us forever. We need to be used used, and here we go. A month in, then we get pregnant, and it was just wow. like it, it's just you couldn't imagine. And but now we have this family, this youth, all these kids around us that are so excited about the Busby baby. Totally. Oh yeah, she's oh. Blake becomes like the mascot of the youth group. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But wow, and then I'm sure nothing could prepare you for that the bombshell moment when you guys are getting that ultrasound and you're like, "Okay, we're pregnant again. Blake's going to have a little sibling." And <laughs> and then to find out there's five babies. Yeah, I mean, there is the time between us praying for years to have a child and it's a huge part of my gospel story of like walking that journey and you know, my um, you know, being baptized as a believer, like where I found Jesus. Um, and 
I remember the specific day when all that happened. And so crossing that line of like full on, Jesus, there's nothing else I can do. You are, I need you. Um, to him answering our prayers that we prayed for years for, to then speed up the journey to saying, I think we want a sibling, but how do we ask God for more? Hmm. We, he gave us what our hearts desire. He gave us what we longed for and wanted um, a family. And now we want to ask him for more? Like, geez, that was a rough season to kind of like process, um, process that to then, um, yeah, just saying, you know, God, you know, our hearts, you know, where we sit, you know, the struggles it was for us. Uh, we're just asking if this is your will, like just, you know, (laughs) in simpler terms, can it just not be so hard? (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's not go through all that other stuff. Um, and you know what? He answered those prayers and he said, it wasn't hard. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, luckily like her doctor being a fertility specialist, you know, whenever she said, you know, we want to try for one more, one more, <laughs> um, he's like, okay, we'll just jump right back on that same regiment that we were on or she was on. And, um, yeah. So, so he said, we'll just jump right back on that same regiment and, um, Luckily, it wasn't nearly as in depth. I mean, she just went right back on the same um, prescription. prescription medication that you know cycle. gave her like a a regular cycle. And then I went and got like all of my sperm count and everything tested and whatnot. And like I was perfectly fine this time around and didn't have to do a single thing. And You're so the laptop a little further away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All those things you think, like, oh, is this laptop doing this? What's going on here? The microwave, you're like, I'm standing sideways when the microwave's running. <laughs> and but yeah, it took uh, two months. Two months. Two months that time um, <laughs> to, uh, you know, say we had a positive pregnancy test. And when that first month came, and it was a no, you know, all those, no matter how strong our faith was at that time, like we literally were like, Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah. Okay, Lord, words what do were you never want? spoken. Yeah. 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 And it was like, you know, the the struggle right there was, okay, God, you've 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 got us. You've captured our hearts. You know where you like what I specifically remember praying in our garage what more do I have? Like, what more do we have? Like, what more do we have to ask for? What more do we have to do? As as far as like, do my words need to change? Do my prayers? Like, why does this have to be so hard? Like, you just start going down this, uh, why me? Why, why, why journey? You know? And, you know, I think we just left kind of like discouraged and not feeling like, okay, what are we going to do? And, between that until that next month, Adam was just like, you know, we just knew that road of infertility was just so, it was so hard on like uh, the marriage on, and though we were at a different part in our faith and at, at where we were was stronger and whatnot, you still, you know, can feel defeated at times. And um, we just said, we're not going to do this a long time. Like we, let's just Let's just try one more, give it a go. And he literally would say, you better hope for twins because, you know, we're not going to do this. Yeah. We're not going to do this again. And so we did get pregnant that next month, go to the doctor. They're like, yay, you're pregnant. And, you know, that first ultrasound turned to be literally uh, nothing was there. And we were like, wait, but my levels say I'm pregnant. And the ultra- ultrasound's not confirming that. And so... Here we are going. Uh, where it, what's going on? You know, yeah, so it my could be blood like work, an ectopic pregnancy, yeah. and like we'd have to go down that road of like, okay, you know, what now? Yeah, or it was just too early. We yeah. just didn't see it. Like, you know, it could have been multiple things. But going through, you know, infertility, you know, you just you start to think the worst and yeah. like, oh no. So we just kept doing blood work. Another ten days, we go back to an ultrasound and like, oh, there it is. There's the heart. Like, there's a baby in there in that bubble there's this dot and that's the baby you know and so we were confirmed pregnancy and he does scans everything else which is typical procedure I mean I could tell you all the things 
about ultrasounds and all these things after years and years yeah. of uh, facility and tests and stuff. So he sees a bunch of dis- different spots and he's like, you dark know, spots. dark spots. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to keep an eye on this. Um, it just looks like it's probably fluid, but let's just keep an eye on it. Um, so we tell family like, oh, yay, you know, here's a picture like everybody does, you know, and yeah. we go and then back. And just kind of give a disclaimer like he saw some, you know, these dark spots. He thinks it's just fluid, but he wants us to come back next week. Yeah. And so, so ended up we coming, back. coming back next week and then immediately turning on the ultrasound and he sees three. Three. Yeah, three. And... uh Three of those, so some of those spots were actually sacks, but they just weren't visible enough um, to see. And so uh, we, at that point, were like, oh, there's three babies and there's <laughs> three sacks in there. Okay. Didn't expect that today, yeah. Lord. And so now the doctor's like, oh, no, this is like... This is a high risk pregnancy at this point. Let me let me pan around and like look around and make sure everything's good and whatnot. And then he pans over and he sees a fourth and he's just like, whoop. That's how he We're says like, it. Oh. Whoop. Yeah, he just, that, that's what he said. He's like, whoop. <laughs> and fourth baby. He's like, what? He's like yeah, here's another and one. So literally, this was like, I, I mean, Adam, it, I mean, this is just, it's like, is this like, is this for real? Like, this is for real, for real? Like, this is happening right now inside my body? Like, there's, you're telling me there's four, four little heartbeats. humans that are going to grow in there. Yeah. And we saw four heartbeats and heard of the heartbeats, and it was real as real it could be, you know? Yeah. And so... And at the time, like, I had, like, this this group text going with our family, and, like, I'm a very a sarcastic, jokester, sarcastic person. Yeah. And so whenever I start texting, like, the play-by-play of, like, what we're seeing and all this stuff, none of the family members believe me. Yeah. They're like, yeah, right. We're, we'll just wait until Danielle can get on here and she can confirm this because out, we don't. are not having quadruplets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And then I finally got on there. I was like, it's for real. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so that, that appointment obviously turned very serious. You know, the doctor, you know, afterwards, you know, whenever he turned off the machine, he's like, look. You know, at this point, this is very high risk. Mm-hmm. You're extremely small. And, you know, this is one of those things where, like, this is going to be hard. Mm-hmm. And, and but also, you know, you have four babies inside of you right now. They're all competing for nutrients and everything like that. Look, you know, next week, whenever you come back, because now you're going to have to come back, like, every week. You know, we're going to have to do all these ultrasounds every single week throughout this whole pregnancy now that, you know, you're confirmed with quadruplets, but don't expect there to be four next week. Yeah. And so he, we're like, oh, okay. And then we need you to go see this other specialty doctor, the maternal fetal specialist, and you're going to have, and uh, you need to hear about reduction and like yeah. all this. And I'm like, you know, you're just overwhelmed by every possible thing that could go mm-hmm. wrong, every Every malfunction, every like whatever you can think of is going to go wrong. And the doctor is clear as day. I'm just laying this out for you, cerebral palsy. Like, I mean, everything. You might not make it. Everything that you can think of. And so he's like, uh, so go home. <laughs> and, and so here we are, like, Blake is just at, like, daycare. I mean, we both worked full-time, and um, Blake's at daycare, and we just get in the car, and it's like you don't even know what to feel because yeah. it's like you heard this, you saw this. Well, you're skipping ahead. You're skipping way ahead. So we came back to the, to the appointment a week later, yeah. and it was like a super early appointment that morning, uh, so we had to bring Blake with us because we had to leave for the – the hospital uh, before her daycare was even open. And so obviously we didn't want her seeing everything that was going on inside of this room, Danielle up on the table and stuff. She's and, three, uh, by the way, yeah, at that she was point. three. And so, you know, Danielle's getting up on the table that morning. Well, what I was going to say was that when we left for, we literally just prayed in the car on the drive because we live 20 minutes out my, outside of Houston. And so we we're on the way home and it was just like, we were arguing in a sense because we we're like, what do we do? You can't do this. It's not safe. Yada, yada. Like, I mean, you go back and forth all thing. We talked to your dad 
And then we were just like praying in the car and it was just like, Lord, if, if this is your will, you know, let it be done. Like we saw the four heartbeats. We're just going to pray for, pray for them (laughs) and whatever that means, you know? And, uh, yeah. So we just prayed for just health and safety and until that next appointment, you know, and just didn't pray for anything, but like, um, if, if this is your will, let it be done. And yeah. if we saw them, if it's your will for them to survive and make this, and like, this is what we're going to pray for, you know? Yeah. So we get there a week, a week later. And so we didn't want Blake just seeing what was going on in the room. So I'm getting her situated, like with a little iPad in the corner. So she's just not paying attention. Right as, I mean, we've gone through so many ultrasounds at this point. We could read our own ultrasounds. And so like, he's turning on the machine. I'm looking down, getting her situated, reach down, grab my coffee, look up as the machine's coming on. And then we saw that one egg had split to go from four to five and just immediately oh drop my coffee. He drops his coffee. You saw it before the doctor did even? Yes. So the doctor, the doctor has like the wand thing and he's still, he like puts it on there, whatever, but he's still messing with the machine, but there's a TV and a TV. So you yeah. can see, like, we can see everywhere. So we see the live And feed. I see, and I, like, immediately pan to Adam, and I could totally tell he noticed what that was because it was clear as day. Hey, it didn't look like that last time yeah. where there was two circles in that one circle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. And this, this was what I like to say is God has humor. Because yes. here they are saying there might not be four. Don't four next Don't week. four next week. <laughs> no one was thinking there would be more. It was... You thought there was going to be less. Yeah. And whenever I said that, you know, I told her, well, you better, you better pray for twins. I wasn't <laughs> expecting twins within quad, within yeah. quintuplets yeah. also. Wow. God really so, hates your sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Paul. So your coffee drops hits the ground. Coffee everywhere. Yeah, and that, that the doctor was like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. he saw it. So he immediately like pans over to find the other eggs because it's like, uh, did they all split? Or like just making sure none of the other making, ones split, yeah. and it didn't even cross our minds that that would have been something we would have seen. But yeah, there they go. There was number five. Oh my gosh! You guys. So you become so very, very rare. One of I, the one of only two people ever who have had all gender, all the same gender quintuplets. Is that right? At yeah, the time, at the time yeah. yeah. At the time, yeah. At the time. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I think there's been one, one or so since then, but yeah. surviving. All girl quintuplets, yeah. yeah. Okay, I know we're up. So we're- I had humor like crazy. I couldn't stop laughing, and Adam's like passing out. <laughs> yeah, how does your brain compute such a thing? <laughs> my, my brain immediately is like just fast forwards to the future. Like, how are we going to do all this? You He's know, more like of a visual, yeah. just trying to like already solve the equation. Five cars, you know, five before college, we- five five weddings, five yeah, yeah. Times five on everything. And where does your brain go, six. Danielle? I have five humans in my body. I just, I literally remember laughing for about two weeks and then it hit me. <laughs> and I was like. I laughed yeah, for two weeks. I mean, That's going to be the episode title. I laughed for two weeks and then it hit me. <laughs> <laughs> AKA, I do, I, it was hard. I didn't understand it, but I just kept saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's so much like uh rebecca and 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 uh isaac no yeah, and rebecca and abraham wait uh, rebecca yeah. and isaac yeah he, he means laughter no sarah kept laughing isaac means laughter because yeah. sarah I, laughed abraham in the tent. Sarah. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah she's like now that yeah, we got way that. to go bible guy guy <laughs> 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 okay, no, we're up against a hard end. Yeah. Uh, gosh, we're just going to have to, if so at some point, put a message in a bottle out there for a part two. I know schedules are crazy because we have not even begun to probe the depths of questions we actually asked. We just wanted to get to know you a little bit, but it's been such a wealth of yeah. marriage information. So before we let you go with, a, with hopefully a promise that you didn't hate the time so much that you won't come back and talk <laughs> parenting and life and, you know, the next chapter, um, of course, which continues, yeah. but... Um, how do you feel like the season of working and separation and having to come and go and conjugal visits, we, we call those the booty calls uh, in the business. <laughs> How do you feel like that time in your marriage kind of prepared you for having to prioritize the marriage in the midst of the orphanage that you call your home? It's a great yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, it gave you just seasons of like need and 
drought and like with, you know, without each other, uh, yeah, it totally prepared us for like the future and stuff. I mean, like even like after we had, after having the babies, I mean, you're just in survival mode or, I mean, a year plus of just like making we're sure. We're still trying to survive, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> different kind of survival at this point but you know just like how to like adapt and overcome and like figure things out I mean that's been our motto this whole time is just like we're just figuring it out as we go I mean there's really no blueprint for this you know I mean we're kind of like in uncharted territory and And I think I think above all like we've always like when our relationship like kicked off it became connecting because of God was like really when we started to bond and like really tie together it was because we were both seeking whether you were re-seeking I am seeking like we knew that there was a connecting there and that has been something that we have always always had a priority and have kept in the middle no matter what struggles or we're not seeing each other it still was a priority to us um but when we look back and say like how did that how did any how did all of those things prepare us and what did we do about it i mean we're still in that phase and we still will forever be in that phase because we are outnumbered in our house and we are always distracted by six little girls and that's not even saying distracted by the world that's just in our house every single day and so there's always something where you're having to divide and conquer or you have to do this but or or just even like as a just as a healthy marriage just trying to you know keep our marriage a priority in the midst of like the chaos really and and figuring out like how we do that and like you know and just it's literally a schedule of just like routine weekly date night and you know making sure that we get a sitter every single week for a routinely routine date night and then also i mean like we try to like once a quarter just do like an extended stay like go for a weekend or whatever just even if it's just like you know a staycation just somewhere in the city just get a hotel room just to just get away from the chaos for a minute just focus on us because yeah. we know that's the that's the biggest priority you know like you know just just in the hierarchy years. obviously like our relationship with god and then it becomes our relationship with each other and we'll tell even tell the kids look you know my relationship with mommy is more important than my relationship with you. And, you know, I have to make, you know, this priority with mommy, you know, above everything, because if we're not, if we're not healthy and we're not happy, then this whole family is going to be, you know, spiraling out into chaos and, and just not happy. And I mean, God gave and gave us very distinct, different gifts and we really do work well as a team together and we identified that whenever our life became a family of eight that we both are strong in different ways and when we work together it's a lot happier in the house and from whenever we had babies to now we have a sixth grader and a bunch of second graders it's still that way today but today it's we've learned over probably the past two years communication and time together devoted to each other outside of what is your distraction on your everyday, whether it's in your house or whatnot, like you got to, you got to prioritize that. You got to talk about your feelings, even though that's super hard, even when you don't even know what your feelings are, like you just got to talk. That's so good. (laughs) That's so simple and so hard to do, but so good. I mean, even as simple as your distractions inside your house, you know what, go sit on the back patio. Like, just look at the grass if you need yes. to. Yeah. Wow. And it's changed. I mean, we used to date when the quints were, we would have weekly dates on the couch in the living room and, you know, maybe have a glass of wine or try to watch a show and then turn into like, why are we trying to watch a show? Because no one's, everyone's going to fall asleep. So, <laughs> you know, so then we have to get outside the house too. Now we need to like really set an overnight time for us to really connect. And so it's just, you have to be, you have to make it a priority and when that is a priority and God is a priority, like your house just runs like happier. Everything just kind of falls into place. And when you've got a bunch of kids in there that 
do get on your nerves because we love them a lot, but they do get on your nerves. At least you have someone that you can try to like vent to and like understand it. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, so you, you guys, you, you guys are incredible <laughs> human beings. Yes. Honestly, uh, I don't know if you just even realize how just how effortlessly, s- sweetly you're saying things that are game changers yeah. for people. I'm sure a lot of people out there saying, "Well, we would," but our life's crazy with our two kids and our poodle. You know, you're like, <laughs> you guys are like, with with your sick, sick <laughs> quintuplets and your other child and all the madness. But you're going, no, no, we put this first. We do this, we do this, and then God's going to keep blessing us, and we're going to keep serving. And uh, so you guys are exemplary. You're amazing. Um, We're grateful for you guys taking the time to talk to us. So Um, grateful. The newest season of Outdaughtered is going to be available very soon for people to watch, right? Ninth season? Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm lost in those numbers. I can only keep up it's, with. It's eight. all confusing. If you look, if you look like on the Discovery Plus app or iTunes, like we're Soon. we've got eight seasons up. Um, ninth season will be coming in 2023. Okay, and then you yeah. guys uh, have a podcast that pretty soon people can w- listen to. You're working on that will be available. Is, uh, anything you can tell us about that? Yeah, so it's a it's going to be a podcast. You know, obviously with being in reality TV and stuff. I mean, like people have a very narrow view of like who we are and stuff, and just like by what we, they see like on their screens or whatnot. And so, you know, this is one of those things. Is like the the name of our podcast is called More Than Reality because like we're so much more than just like what you see and and. You know, there's so many things that happened in our life, so many things that God has done in our life and through us to make us like where we are and who we are right now. And that same story goes for everyone. I mean, that God's like kind of formulating this story through everyone. And so, you know, we'll bring people on, but, you know, a lot of it is just like telling our story, the day-to-day stuff, but also like way back, like, man, this is what... This is what made me who I am, and this is what God did, you know, in my life and stuff. And, you know, it'll be a little bit about that, a little bit about what's going on through the week and, like, what we've what we've been doing on a weekly basis and, you know, a little bit of that and then a little bit of just bringing some friends on and, and having some really cool discussions. So, so good. Love it. All right. Well, listen to More Than Reality, uh, Daughtered, uh, with Daniel, Danielle, and Adam. Thank you for taking some time to be with us. Thank you for yeah. who you guys are. Thank you. God bless you guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for listening. And be sure to swing by LeviLusco.com to see what's going on in our world and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. In the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny and Levi Lusco, out. Out.